What up, y'all? It's Drew from the lab. You're listening to Ambiance Studios. Let's get it. What up, people? Welcome to Ambiance Podcast, special late night edition with my boy Andrew Venegas sitting to the right of me. What's good, y'all? He is a dancer and choreographer out of West Covina, California, which is my hometown. It's good to see you, bro. You too, cool. It's been a, it's been a minute for you guys listening and watching that don't know. I have known Andrew Venegas since he was a wee little boy. I think Literally. when you were like seven or eight. So yeah. we, we, uh, I played football with his brother growing up. His dad was a coach. His mom was athletic director. <laughs> Your little sister was like a cheer, cheerleader, cheerleader. <laughs> man. So it's, it's good as hell to see you. And I'm very proud of you Thank and you, what, where, you, where you're at in your life today, man. Thank you. Yeah, it's definitely been crazy growing up and like going from being a little boy and see my brother and his older friends just like have fun and like me just like being inspired and just like wishing like dang i can't wait to get older and then now i'm like older and it's like yeah weird it's like whoa and you're a middle child too right yeah. how is it to be like a middle child how's 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 that been growing up for you um, i think at times i i don't want to say i got paid attention to most of the time but i think more of that happening was because i was like the bad one like the more bad the, one more the you bad were the one. bad one bro i'm not gonna I, lie no, you i was the bad one I was the three, like i was a troublemaker so i feel like that was why they were always having to pay attention to me, hold my hand throughout everything but they taught me a lot but i think i i was uh, such a curious kid about just everything you yeah. know growing up like they had to hold my hand i think without that i probably would have ended off doing dumb stuff right you know? yeah you had good guidance yeah, like definitely because you you yeah that's one thing i will say about you've always had a lot of energy even yeah. since you were a kid mm -hmm. so it's important to have like important good people around you like mm -hmm. your parents or like your siblings to check me yeah mm -hmm. and to guide you too because right. like you said you could you could end up using that energy in like the wrong way right mm -hmm. right because even even if intentionally like i don't know that I, you know i'm acting like that or going off track like i'm think i'm okay and reassured that i'm fine because of the people i'm around and surround myself around yeah but i'd have to realize like and i realized growing up like if i want to be around certain people that aren't growing like i'm trying to grow then we're just going to stay in the same spot so we're going to be complacent and we're going to keep doing the same stuff so yeah my parents stepped in like notice you know i wasn't stepping up and doing the stuff i needed to do when it comes to just responsibilities normal life stuff so they told me they're like you your friends aren't really your friends you know and i was just mm. like what do you mean like yeah they are and i'm like they're like yeah they're not and like you'll realize it one day I was like, at what age were they telling you that type of stuff they're telling me that like my junior year junior senior okay. year and i never really realized that but a lot of that did have to come from me fully not like i guess like um I guess being fully 100% with myself and like, I guess I was always trying to fit in, you know, like uh, act certain yeah. way with certain people, certain groups, you know, try to fit in and like impress people, like, especially when I joined the dance team, like just trying to like give a lot more energy, be this type of person to kind of make them feel like, oh, he's like cool, you know? Okay. So back then that's how you were, that's yeah. what you were doing mm -hmm. it for. That's what I, I was doing. We're going to get into that as well, but I, I love the fact that you're doing like such amazing and big things and you're coming from West Covina. And the reason why I say that is because a lot of people from West Covina, I'm not throwing shade on the city at all because I love West Covina. I love everybody in it. But I feel like for some reason, the dynamic of the city gets people trapped and kind of almost makes them like stay or live a more of like a, mm -hmm. a small minded lifestyle. You know what I mean? No, I feel that for sure. So... It's good to know that, like, you're doing big things and you're going to continue to do big things. You're not getting stuck in that mm -hmm. weird West Covina City dynamic, you know? Right. I know, because I have a lot of friends that, like, literally, like, that's where they're at right now. I mean, they're we stuck, all do, you yeah. Know? And that's okay. Like, they're they're on their own journey. They're on their own time. And eventually, they'll, they'll find their niche or whatever that comes with. But, you know, like, I, it sucks to, like, see people that have such good talent or see such... Or see just passions, things that they're passionate about, and not fully not act on them, yeah, act pursue on them, them, pursue them. Because like, shoot, I would want to be able to like, like um, what's it called, tag along or um, do a collaboration with them and certain, yeah, like, like we're doing stuff. right yeah, now, exactly. Yeah, we're two kids stuff from like West Coast, but you know, being stuck and then also people that have talent being surrounded by people that wish they had talent holds them back and yeah. makes them not succeed and you know, venture out doing the stuff they want to do. Very true. Have you always had these big dreams, like, since you were a kid? Or yeah, were you not I even mean, really thinking about stuff like this when you were a kid? When I was a kid, honestly, I think that's the 
first thing that I thought about before, like right away, like when it came to like what I was doing at home when I was bored or in general as a kid, like it was music. It was like I want to really? be a superstar. I want to be a rock star. I want to oh, be like Chris okay. Brown. Like you, you love the spotlight back yeah, then. You wanted I to love, be in the spotlight. Like, I love the center of attention. I love like that feeling of making people feel pleased or like feel like you know they're having like they're having fun. Yeah, just enjoying their time. Like I like people to enjoy the time more. If that makes sense. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. Like I feel like there's people like that where you want to. If you you don't want to be the only one having fun, you want to make sure everyone mm-hmm. everyone's around you having fun. Yeah, because right? even if like everyone's having fun, like I like to be that light and energy that keeps that you know energy up and keeps it consistent. Yeah. Because you'll and you'll catch people that like will look at you and be like, all right, this guy. Like, you know, but that comes with them not fully being confident with themselves and Mm -hmm. they're still trying to figure out insecurities or insecurities. Yeah. So I hear you, man. So how did you even get into dance? Because when I knew you and your kid, it was just like sports. You know what I mean? You were, you had a big sports family. So what introduced you to the realm of, of dancing? And what was that like first spark of interest for you? Honestly, like I grew up. Literally, sports is, like, still in my blood. Like, if I had the chance to, like, play football, play, like, soccer, play basketball, baseball, like, I literally would. Oh, really? Like, if I got the chance, and obviously, like, things aren't just thrown out and opportunities, I won't get a spot like that. You have to <laughs> definitely go to school and do stuff. Andrew yeah. in the NFL next right. week. <laughs> Imagine. Shoot. But, yeah, like, uh, literally, I think it was my eighth grade year, I transferred to a different um, uh, pre-high elementary school, which is Hollandcrest in West Co. And um, I actually saw one of my friends in math class that uh, I used to play basketball with, uh, I think like two years prior to that, okay. to eighth grade. And I was like, yo, like, oh no, sorry. I played basketball with him in eighth grade when I transferred there, played basketball with him. We were good friends for a long time. And then I transferred to Bishop Vermont my freshman year. And then we were not friends anymore because he went to a different school. Yeah. And then I played basketball, football. I did track and soccer there too. And then after that, uh, we were, um, my parents told me that, like, you know, like, look, like, we don't know if this school is fully, like, right for you. Like, obviously, like, academically, like, I told them, too, like, they knew I wasn't fully for academic, like, you know, school was hard for me. I had yeah, it's a private school. For yeah. you guys listening, Bishop Mont is, like, a yeah, private school so, in La Puente. Yeah, there was classes in there that had to do with, like, you know, like, religion classes and all that stuff. And, like, the first day, I remember, like, our teacher was, like, asking us a bunch of questions. And, like, everybody had their hands raised. And I was, like, the only one, like, who's Isaiah? Who's <laughs> this person? Like, who? How? Why do you guys know all these answers? I was, like, what the heck? You felt, was, like, out of place, would you yeah, say? Yeah, it was hard. Like, I had a bad grade that class, like, the Hoyer. And I tried so hard. Like, Damn. I even had, like, uh, what's it called? A study group that I even went oh. to at school. And I still, like, it was so hard. Damn. Like, you definitely have to know the Bible and, like, grow up like learning it to understand everything i'm, so. I'm sure there was kids that have been going to like bible study or just no, like yeah. were groomed to go mm-hmm. to that high school you know what i mean yeah, before they, all, they went they there they all had their what is it called their first communion okay like, yeah i never had that okay so you <laughs> didn't have that you're kind of so. going in set already set back yeah but okay. the only thing that kept me there was literally the sports because like i i was on the soccer team i was on varsity uh, my freshman mm. year and i got pretty good in my playing time just for as a freshman and I was the only freshman on the team wow there was no sophomores at all or freshmen besides me just juniors and seniors and only seniors started I think because they were freaking good that year and I started or I played over the juniors damn so it was crazy like soccer was my sport I think out of all the sports I played soccer was definitely it but transferred my sophomore year to West Co and then decided to take a year off of sports and just focus on school because I wasn't doing too, too well. I wanted to just, like, kind of get myself in a structurized, like, you know, zone. Yeah. Stay on a good, consistent uh, pace. And then out of nowhere, I saw my friend in math class, my friend Ralph, and I played basketball with. And I was like, yo, bro, I was like, you still playing basketball? He was like, no, I actually dance now. I was like, what? <laughs> what are you dancing? I was like, bro, like, what do you mean? Like, that ballet stuff? I'm like, what? No. Like, why? Like, you were so good at basketball. He was like, bro, like, trust me. Like, we have a rally coming up, like, this week. Like, wait till you see it. We're performing. Like, it's crazy. Like, do, like, hip-hop stuff. And I was like, so Damn. so at that time, you didn't know the difference between, like, what the different yeah, types of dan- like, dancing I, I've heard of dance before, but I've only heard of that through movies. Like, Step Up. Like, I thought that stuff only happened in movies type of stuff. Okay. Like, I didn't know, like, they had competitions. Like, there was dance classes. Like, I had no idea any of that existed. Choreographers, like... Anything in the dance room, I had no idea existed. Wow. So, like, literally, he showed me, told me about the dance team, and I was like, whoa. Like, that rally, like, 
it was a performance. Like I was like mind blown. I was like, whoa! Like everyone's screaming for them. Like those were they badass. Feel good. Yeah. I was like, damn, they look fuck. They look tight. I was like, I want to be one of them. Like, and I love dancing. So I was like, hell yeah! Like that looks sick. Like especially because I've always had. I always like not freestyle in a sense like when I, you know how people like hear music and they just dance whatever yeah. they feel. I've always done that necessarily, but like fully, obviously I'm not um, experienced enough to where I fully know how to control my body before. So I didn't you know, yeah. know how to do certain things. But when I saw that, I was like, whoa! I was like, I can see myself doing that. Like, you you saw yourself like on that stage. Yeah, like I saw yeah. myself feeling it, like how they're feeling the music and like letting the way like they're letting their emotions be released through dance moves. Like I feel like that was another outlet that I can use that I've been needing because okay. sports have always been my outlet for you know letting out aggression, like whatever type of feeling I'm feeling. But just watching them, I feel like I felt what they were feeling. Okay. So I never felt like that feeling ever. I was like, whoa, like I got goosebumps. Like wow. I, I want to give this feeling to people. Like, I want I want to be able to show people how I feel. So, like, literally, I got connected, and literally, I asked my homie. I was like, yo, I was like, how do I audition? He was like, well, we're not having auditions because the beginning of the year is actually competition. So, we train all during summer. So, you would have to have joined during summer. Uh. So, you can't. And I was like, fuck, like, I need a join. So, I, like, did everything I could. And, like, I ended up hanging out with him and his squad, like, throughout the whole time because I didn't know anybody. So, of course, like, my friend was like, of course you could join, chill with us. So I got to know all them, all the dancers, and then most of the dancers ended up talking to the captain, and they ended up hosting an audition, and they hosted it for the whole school, and there was 30 people that came, and I was the only one that made it. Wow. Was it that, was it that hard to make the team? Uh, no, I think they only just wanted me. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. They only just wanted you. Yeah, in a sense. Like, they knew, like, I was what they were looking for, because that audition, they, they posted, they said this audition is strictly if you're competition ready we're not going to um, take you if you if you're ready you are able to be on stage and perform with these people so but you did you have any prior training to audition that's the thing i i didn't but i had time i had like three weeks before the audition and i took classes i would train i took like two classes a day so you just went super trained. hard i went super hard and like train my ass off wow uh, and after this was after making the team they were like in three weeks we have evaluations if you're not up to par then you're cut that's what it is so i made the audition made the made the team then they told me about evaluations if i'm not ready if i can't dance with this person they told me they said you're tall as hell and he's tall as hell so you have to be his counter he has uh, a lot more experience than you so you have to be able to dance up to his level wow i was like Ooh, all right so i had to do everything i took and i'm the type like you, you know me like we're both the same like mm -hmm. if i see someone else do something like i'm not gonna let them be better than it's me. that like, competitive I'm, yeah, spirit in you yeah so i think that's i use their literally talent as inspiration and motivation to be not better than them but to get myself to where they are but once i'm at you know their level i'm gonna benefit myself and take myself further and and use that deep connection that I've been looking for and searching for to just finally, you know, let go. Yeah, so, okay, so that's how you first got introduced mm -hmm. to dancing, specifically yeah. hip-hop dancing. Yeah, and then I made it. And then after that, it's been boom. It's like, been boom ever since? Skyrocketed, literally. After I made the team and did comp that first year, like, dance was my thing, like, every single day. Let me ask you a question. Did you get, like, you made the team. Did you feel like you found your it, like, quote-unquote, like, you found that thing that, is your passion that you've been missing for so long? Because you kind of mentioned that before, but mm -hmm. did you know that I think this I, was it for you, or did you kind of... I fully knew when I made the team on audition day. When I found out that... When I, when I found out I made the team, when I got the text message, you have made the team, I was like, wow. Like, you were... Because you were already interested, but yeah. you're like, now is, yeah. it's, it's like, on even, now. Even once I auditioned, before I even found out I made the team, like, after the audition day, like... I remember I learned the choreo. I did it all. I didn't mess up on one move. Like, I felt it. And I was going in. Like, I made have like, you know, looked awkward on some parts. But yeah. I was giving facials, like, everything. Performance, like, ugh, Like, I was just having fun. And, like, I didn't pay attention to the people in front of me, like, the coaches. Like, and they were hella intimidating. Like, oh, yeah. how intimidating. You were in a like, room. Like, straight face. Like, yeah, like, if I'm dancing right here, probably where the camera's at is where the table's at. We have to dance this close to them. So they're just staring at you. Like, you have to <laughs> wow. do it. And it's, like, two by two. Like, two people at a time. And you're so new at it. Yeah, it's like... so, and the person I did it next to didn't know it and was messing up the whole time. So <sighs> I had to, like, not pay attention to him <laughs> in the mirror or else I would have messed up. But I didn't mess up at all, and I was literally the only one that made it. Wow. It was crazy. So, so at this point, how old were you? Uh, I was 15. 15 years old. 15. Like, freshman, sophomore, sophomore, high school, right? Sophomore. Okay, so after that, when did things start 
really like elevating for you as far as just like because i know you 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 joined the lab right Mm. so when what was the next step for you in your dance career after that i think honestly right when i joined the dance team luckily the dance team for the school was uh actually collab a collaboration slash like times the lab so the coaches were hot like the school paid the directors from the lab to coach the team so at Bishop Amal? Uh, at, at um, West Covina. Oh, so at West Covina, because this yeah. is when you went to West yeah. Covina. Yeah. Okay, got you. Covina. Yeah, so literally when we went to West Covina, we were collaborating with the lab, so we got to train at the lab. Wow, 24/7. shout out to the lab, man, because yeah, that's so. that's a, a great thing to be involved in the community, to get to get the youth involved in dancing, no, you definitely. know what I mean? Because not a lot of high schools do that. Mm-hmm. And they've been building like the foundation, the foundation that they've built like now, like in this, the way they structureize and handle everything is like, beyond the roof and like it's definitely been years to come for like what they have now because they started like like three four studios like ago like i remember that yeah, yeah. They, they have that obviously i think they're in the same space by the food for less yeah because you know, uh-huh. i lived i lived right there growing up so i i, sp- I saw when they were first building it i was like what is this thing walk by yeah. every now and then i'm just like every time i walk by it, it's just popping now mm-hmm. like yeah especially like my director val she started off in her garage literally starting off when she first wanted to start choreographing she told her dad like look i want to start choreographing like I'm gonna build the funds, and once I build enough funds, I'm gonna show you. But I'm gonna build those funds by getting enough people, and like enough around like same students, like consistently. Yeah. If I could, she said, I think she said, if I could get enough students consistently and show you that they'll stick with me, can I get a small studio space? And then she was, he's like, all right, you can start off in your garage. So she had a bunch of people consistently that would come in her garage, and she'd have privates with them through her garage. Wow. She built enough money, showed him, got a small studio, went there. <laughs> got bigger 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 and she now like she built this whole empire that's inspirational how long has the the lab been open i think it's been open for like i think throughout this whole thing i think like 10 years 10 years wow Yeah, before i think like five years ago i think before i joined the lab that it wasn't called the lab it was called something else before but okay um, i can't really remember but yeah it's been a long time so like luckily when i came i feel like the way i leveled up fast and the way i I ex- like I got experience like pretty quickly yeah, in a man. sense like you have literally like I was able to I was on comp team and I went to this co- competition called HHI and I only had one year of dancing training so this was when you were like 16 16 yeah and then literally this is like the almost like kind of like the Olympics of dance and 60 countries from around the world like all come and the best they take the top three of the best con- like teams of around the world and literally these top teams could be as good as you and we won first place. Did you, so did you realize how good you were or did you start like winning competitions like this and start like getting recognized and that made you realize how good you are? Uh, Which one was it? Honestly, I feel like, I feel like I really never looked at myself as being good in a sense. I feel like I've always looked at myself, even now, like I feel like I look at myself as just growing in a sense because I feel like there's never, time to settle and you never you should never be complacent at where you're at because even myself like I still have stuff to learn even teaching my students like even when I teach and I'm the teacher I'm still learning from my students when I teach them right you know yeah Cause sometimes these students have really good work ethic and they train really really good so when I take class I could be like wow this person did really really good like that motivates me to be a better student when I take class from someone else uh, you feel me? so, like, so I, do you still take classes mm-hmm. from other people yeah a choreographers as a choreographer you need to take class because uh, the more training you get is better for yourself you're learning it's very it's good to be versatile when it comes to um styles because learning different styles helps you improve just different like the you know like the versatile versatility yeah, versi- versatile. yeah. um especially like me i'm more of like a wavy kind of like r&b soulful like expression type of person so literally like with that it it helps me um I guess express a different side of myself. Okay. You know, but um, yeah, it's crazy. It's just the way it works. Like. Yeah, and I think that's very important. What you just said, the fact that you still take classes, because I feel like a lot of people need to hear that. Just because you may be great at what you do, you can never stop growing. You can never stop learning. Mm-hmm. I think I heard uh, some something with where like Denzel Washington still takes acting classes, you know, mm-hmm. and he is one of the best actors in the world. Right. If he can still take acting classes, like who's going to teach Denzel Washington how to act, right? Right. 
but yeah he takes the classes because he mm-hmm. wants to get better and that's what it's about yeah and like a lot of people don't realize like if think about this like if i'm an artist if i'm a singer if i want to rap or sing to a beat that i've never heard before i'm gonna feel uncomfortable with it so if i want to get but if i feel it but i can't catch a vibe with it I got to practice more on that type of vibe and those type of sounds in order to feel comfortable and freestyle and get to the point where I can make music to it. Yeah. So for me, choreographing, I have to take classes from different people that teach to these songs that I want to choreograph to, to understand how to choreograph to it. Got you. Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, 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 it does. Yeah, so I have to learn how they create and how they process things, how they move to these t- certain sounds so I can. That's crazy, man. There's a lot that goes into it that people from the outside world don't realize because, like, obviously, I'm, I don't know that much about dance so Mm -hmm. as the average person it's just like you don't realize how many factors come into play here there's a lot right it's a lot it's it's a lot i'm still learning like especially like me being young choreographer and like um with the amount of years i have um that i've been dancing like i it's very easy for me to be looked at in a different way only because um i don't have as many years as they yeah. have, you know, experience wise, like, especially when I teach, like I need to make sure I'm teaching with the right structure, whatever moves that are culture based, like I need to make sure I teach it and say that this is from this, this is from that. Because people from out, like outside were like, they could come at me in a different way and be like, you taught this, but you just, you not saying that this is part of our culture. Or this is a, a dance move from Afro or, you know, like that type of stuff like that, that just shows that you're saying that that's your move. You made that. But really this is a move that we culturally have danced together for our own love and like for passion just like this is what we do for like for culture yeah yeah so like people could get like like hurt over that and like you could uh, be looked at a different you way could get, so, like yeah. you could disrespect people mm-hmm. very you could very easily disrespect people wow i didn't that. know that mm-hmm. so you very you have to know knowledge wise as well when you're teaching so i have to That's make sure crazy. when i talk and especially if i'm in a group or people or like people that are choreographers that are older than me come to take my class i need to make sure that i'm not you know, on some stepping little, on their little toe. kids type, oh, of, I got you. Kid yeah. type of stuff. Like I need to talk and like a big boy and make sure I know what I'm talking about. Wow, man. I didn't and know so, that. Yeah. That's, Did, a, that's the scary part of, <laughs> of being a teacher and a choreographer at, with so many years of dancing. Yeah. And that, do you ever think about that? Cause you're, you're only 21, right? Mm-hmm. So you just turned 21 too. So you're super young. Do you think about like the amount of success that you have right now in your in your craft and just how much longer you have to go at this and just like how much better you can be it's got to be exciting no it really is and it's crazy too to like even know that like i'm only gonna grow up from here because Mm -hmm. literally like a year ago i was never at the i never had the mindset or told myself that i was gonna get booked for tour or get hired to be a backup dancer let alone a choreographer and i got hit up by um this artist called Dinah Jane. Uh, she was a part of Fifth Harmony. I don't know if you've heard of them before. Yeah. But um, she's part of Fifth Harmony. Bef- after they broke up, she obviously went single and everything. And yeah, she hit me up. She's young. She's 22. I think she's going to be 23 soon. Like, literally, like, she's a young artist. She hit me up out of nowhere. And this is me still dancing, still taking class, still like choreographing to get myself better, not even so I can be at that level and dance behind people like artists and like you know yeah. be a backup dancer and i get hit up for it and literally she's like i want i'm interested in having you choreograph for my tour and i was just like what like what the hell like i'm not ready like what like she's like we want i've been looking for like a young like a new generation from this you know this upcoming like um industry in la like i want a new vibe like i want someone young who's like different but i don't want like anybody older who's been used before like i want a new type of choreographer someone new to get their hands like wet you know and she chose me and like literally like a week later i met up with her and the actual choreographer so i got hired as her assistant choreographer oh wow yeah so i'm literally that's my title for her still um we're obviously in the low right now we haven't really been doing stuff because of covid but right we're eventually going to be going on a europe tour uk (sighs) tour that's exciting. Yeah, so I have that still coming up. That was supposed to hit in right before COVID started, but... It's still going to you know, come. Yeah, it's still it, coming. So I st- literally, after COVID, I still have a lot of big stuff that's still planned. I'm still going to be touring after COVID hits, so everything's going to be definitely more blessings to come. But you've, and you've done, like, pretty big gigs, right? Like Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, danced with uh, Sierra, uh, danced um, for BTS. It's a, one of the, Korean. The, the top Korean K-pop groups. 
dance at Central Station. That that must have been crazy because they have a big fan base. So. Yeah, definitely. Like even just dancing, like seeing them in person, like they, it's crazy. Like they're literally like they're tight. Like really, they're really really cool. It's crazy. Like K-pop artists, they all look like dolls. Like it's, <laughs> they look like fake. Like it's crazy. But it's they're all like they just have good jeans. Like their skin yeah, is crazy. Yeah, they got they got good skincare yeah. over there, bro. Cream no, product yeah. skincare. Yeah, they're Get hella cool it. though. They're as much as like strict, you know, with like security and like them being, you know, as famous as they are and people being crazy as they are. Yeah. With them, like they were really, really like, f- like family oriented, f- friend oriented with us. Like very friendly. Yeah, very like try to hold conversations with us. Like would say what's up, pound at us sometimes. Like they're not no big head. Yeah, not no, not not in a sense big headed, but kind of like uh, like egotistical or mm, i think more more so like you can't touch me like we can't touch you like just keep it at that like got you you know like not so business yeah not so bu- it's it's more business related not anything like fun okay wise, you know yeah that's good to hear that. yeah but yeah they were really really cool and there we were actually supposed to go i think um we're supposed to go on tour with them too i think uh before covid hit too they were supposed to go on a world tour actually uh, yeah but um covid hit so that didn't go through but literally they still keep hitting us up for like certain projects so i know in the future we're definitely going to still be involved with them so that's super tight but yeah besides that there was one more that was crazy uh um new year's eve i performed at uh uh new york you performed in New York? Yeah, New Year's, New Year's Eve. Oh, shit. Yeah. How was that experience? It was crazy, performing in front of a million people. Like, <sighs> Was it like in Times Square? Yeah, Times Square. Times Square, New Year's Eve. Damn. It Isn't it crazy, crazy, bro, where the fact that something that you love took you to an experience like that, being yeah, from like West Covina? Like, it's crazy. It's, it's really, it's really like... It puts me in awe. Like I can't even pinpoint on a certain like on certain words that I can find to kind of describe that feeling. Like yeah. it's crazy. Just waking up knowing all you gotta do is like teach and dance and like just chill out and then they get to fly you back home and like you just do what you love. Yeah. Like And the and the yeah. fact that the fact that you're so young and things are moving so fast, I feel like you don't really get a chance to to uh embrace it and and to realize it in the moment so i feel like it's one of those things where like if it hasn't already happened for you like you're gonna look back on these times and just be like man like this i was living the dream you know no and honestly that's so true because i still like i don't catch myself like looking back at my look looking back at what i've done and like because you're so focused on the future yeah like still like what's next what's next you know so it's like now that i look back at it even talking about it i'm like whoa like that happened. I, have, like, I did that. Done a lot, like, and it's crazy to think about because I feel like I've always been the type of person to never really find that reassurance. Where like, okay, I'm doing good. Like, I know, like, I need to do better. Yeah. You know? like, Bro, I remember the the first time I even found out that you were dancing was because I was watching Shark Tank. Oh, <laughs> I shoot. saw you on Shark Tank, bro. I'm dead. Because you did something for one of the one of their uh, somebody's product or some. Yeah, there some... was this. There's a little girl. She had these like socks like that they yeah. made where I guess girls could pull them up if they want to wear boots. They had like a sock little pocket where your phone could go. So it was like, oh, like you could even dance and your phone will fall out. So like we had to put the socks on and everything. <laughs> and we did bro, that whole little thing. The biggest trip in the world because. I mean, I, I had moved away. I think I was in college at that time um, and lost lost touch with the with your family a little bit. I haven't seen you guys in a minute. And then I saw that, and I was just like, yo, I got hyped. I was just like, yeah, yes, that, that was a fun Andrew. one. That was pretty cool. It was crazy seeing the, <laughs> the judges in person. Oh, yeah. yeah oh, yeah, seeing, like... They're super scary, like, on TV and everything, and then you talk to them in person, they're all, like, super fun and, like, lovey-dovey and, like, For cool. Real? Yeah, they're really, and really cool. And Mark Cuban, all them. Yeah. They're... They did get it got scary though because there's one part where we have to be on the side, but we're still in the in the shot. But she was talking about her thing and like they were like coming at her with questions and like it was getting pretty intense. We were like, oh, just shoot. sitting there like, like, <laughs> like dang, like she's just ten, <laughs> like chill. Yeah, that's funny, man. Yeah, it was it was a cool experience. What going back to a little bit to your your career? What were some learning barriers that you had when you first started off that you had to get uh, past? I I definitely feel like. Um, Definitely a confidence thing, especially when it comes to content. I definitely found myself not being confident enough um, in the stuff that I um, like uh, videotaped or made. Like I wouldn't feel confident to post it. And being a dancer and choreographer, like trying to get booked for jobs, like you have to post content. You have to post things that you want to see yourself being in. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So for myself, like I used to be scared posting choreography, and I told myself I want to be able to be a choreographer one day. So it's like, how can you I? You can't. Yeah, yeah. I had to fight that feeling and fight that confidence. So it's just like, 
I told myself and ended up realizing because a fan, I, remember, I can't even remember what, but like, I do remember this is one fan that told me and I told them out, they were like, I love this piece so much that I was like, oh dang, like, thank you. Like, I didn't think that it was like, you know, that great, but it means a lot, like coming from you. And they were like, you know, honestly, like, don't think that people aren't gonna not like your stuff because they are not gonna like your stuff. There's always gonna be people that dislike your stuff, but yep. just know that there's always gonna be one person that likes your stuff. That's gonna, and, that it's gonna resonate uh -huh. with. And that might motivate and inspire them to show this person, which inspires that person to show this person and et cetera. It, I love it's, that. It's a domino effect. So that stuck with me. I was like, wow, like that's true. Like, even though I post something, there might be people that might not like it and they don't even have to comment. So it's like, if they're not liking it, they won't comment. So why do I pay attention to that? Like I should be paying attention to the stuff that is being sent to me, you know? Yeah. And it's very, very easy to feel like that because mm -hmm. of the way social media is today. Mm -hmm. It's a different, it's a new dynamic. You Definitely. know what I mean? Like there's not a lot of knowns about how it affects like your, the human brain and everything. Mm -hmm. Right. So the fact that you got past that, do you think is a big reason as to why you're at, you're where you're at today? The fact that you're no, confident. Definitely. I think without, without being confident in what I'm posting when it comes to content, I think just has to do with me being myself. Like if I'm not creating something that's fully genuine and like, I'm not doing it for me, then it's like, why am I not doing it? Like, why am yeah. I, why am I even doing this in the first place? So like now, nowadays, like if I post something, I post it for me. Like I do it cause I had fun. Like, or I post it cause I like this picture. Like I don't do you it. You could care me. less what the numbers yeah, are now, right? Exactly. I could care less what the numbers are. Like I'm only doing it for my aesthetic. I'm only doing it for my own appearance, not for everybody else's pleasure. You know? Yeah. That's important, man. Post and ghost. Yeah. Just post it. Don't even worry about what's mm -hmm. coming after. And I think everybody can resonate with that. If you're watching or listening to this, you know that that comes into your head sometimes where you think too much about something you posted. Like, oh, should I take it down? Like, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. like, Especially as, like, a, a creative or yeah. an artist. Like, if you're trying to go places, like, all you... Don't think of your page as, like, if you're trying to get to that point, like, don't think of your page, like, as something you do or post for fun. Like, think of it as a resume. Like, I think of my thing as a resume. The po if I post pictures, I'm going to post pictures that I see myself being an advertisement or, a like, a magazine or, like, stuff like that. Like, I try to be creative when it comes to certain things that I do or post because if I'm going to post it, this needs to be used for something, if that makes sense. So if I have people that want to find me or, like, use me for an advertisement, like, they could, like, okay, let's see what he has. Like, oh, this looks, like, cool, like... Maybe, well, like we could do something with him. Like he has an aesthetic for this type of thing. Like maybe so. You know? Very very good point, man. Because you got to be able to do. You got to be able to make moves that set you up for opportunities in the future. Mm -hmm. Like that goes perfectly with you. What you said. You can't expect to be. This is a this is a stretch, but you can't expect to be the president and not make moves, not get into po po politics and right. just expect it. You know what I mean? You got to mm -hmm. make moves to get to where you want to be. Exactly. Yeah. So as far as like a choreographer, what were some like learning curves that you had to get past as a choreographer? Because it's one thing to, to dance good, but it's another thing to teach other people how to mm -hmm. dance, right? Now, that was the thing that I had a hard time with because in the beginning, I think um, I first started out like wanting to start teaching people that were already as good as me. And starting out as a choreographer, it's very bad to start teaching people that are already good because when it comes to teaching, they're gonna learn it and they're gonna get it down. So when it comes to people that don't get it and have a hard time getting it, you're gonna have a hard time working with them. Yeah. You feel me? Yeah. You're not gonna like understand like, ugh, you're gonna get annoyed, you're gonna irritate yourself and get frustrated and blame them for you not knowing how to help them, you know? So mm -hmm. for me, it was just like, damn, like I had to start off with kids my coach Val, she put me, started off with kids, like, because kids are the hardest to work with, and it makes you... Because they're short attention yeah, span and everything. You're, you're, <laughs> the patience you need is very, very high, and that's something I had to learn, and that's why I have so much patience, like, when it comes to teaching people, like, I learn so much teaching kids, like, having to get them to, like, focus and talk, go certain ways, use different outlets and routes to help them understand stuff, and, like, I feel like even sports as a as a background, I feel like helps me with certain things because I can yeah. use like certain like techniques or like certain drills or like certain things for like, if I'm like, how many people play sports here? Like, okay, if you played soccer, just imagine this, like, blah, okay. blah, blah, blah. like, like I, little analogies. Uh, little analogies, uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, but I d think definitely being able to teach them and have the knowledge and being confident enough what I'm teaching because teaching kids, like, it's hard. You have to, they get distracted very easily it's super easy to get bored as a kid and like 
Yeah. And I learned that it was a choreographer because they got bored on me easy. And like <laughs> I was like, dang, like how do I get them? Like you know, like you have to do the, do certain things to make them feel comfortable, to help them f- make this environment around them be something that they can feel comfortable with and make them feel yeah. like home be the most vulnerable with you know yeah and yeah that was every, the hardest every kid is different too right so you gotta mm-hmm. you gotta approach every kid from like a coaching standpoint mm-hmm. differently right and i had to realize and pay attention to also as a choreographer it's not just about teaching the piece because that's all in the beginning i was just like oh i just want to teach that's i just have fun teaching like watching people do my dance but like not paying attention to like caring and being aware of like how they're doing it or i was just caring for like oh like oh, i'm teaching just to get people to see like oh andrew's teaching oh you know? uh, yeah so i was so caught up in that not really paying attention like getting in depth and focusing on the matter of execution we call it execution when you dance okay. and move like there's certain executions you know like when you tackle people there's a certain way you need to tackle a certain person on a certain angle because if you don't if you don't have the right momentum yeah yeah, yeah. Gonna do, gonna do fundamentals yeah. fundamentals exactly. got you yeah so there's certain fundamentals definitely i had to learn when it came to teaching that all came with it though, but yeah, it was it was a struggle in the beginning because it it was hard. Like, you definitely like as a choreographer, like you have fun watching people get it right then and there. So like when you like start or you have a couple people that like are struggling, like not getting it. It's like damn, I want to move on, but like I have these three people. So it's like learning how to be impatient or not being patient. So learning how to be patient. Yeah. And work with people that you know are having a hard time because I have to remember I was exactly where they were at Mm -hmm. and if I was them and I asked for help and I didn't get the help I would be hurt yeah and so I have I always put myself in student shoes if that makes sense no that's important too and especially because these kids are like in a vulnerable state they're trying Mm -hmm. something that if they don't if they have confidence issues and they don't feel like they could get better at it and ask you for help, then it's probably like they might just ditch it and go to something else and you mm-hmm. don't want that, right? Yeah, definitely not. Because I always tell my students, like even off class, like no matter how followers I have or anything, like if I'm investing my time in you and like if I tell you to like to DM me and like if you need help, like if you want me to watch a video of you and like critique you, give you like critiques on certain things what you need to work on, like I'll do that. Like, yeah. like I give my time to people that, like, you know, want to benefit themselves and be better, you know, not just be better to please others. Like, yeah. As a choreographer, how do you, how's your creation process like when you come, come up with a dance? Oh, I love that question. How does that, how does that happen? I love, like, I love creating with people and having them watch and learn with me as I create. Just because I feel like they always, anybody always learns something from me, even, just as I learn from anybody else when I learn from them when they're creating. But for me, I always like to pick a song that I can relate to in a certain way if it involves, like, in terms of situations, past situations, like, things I'm going through, the way I feel. So when I create, I only, anything I do or choreograph, I tell stories. Mm. Everything I do is a story. No matter How what. so? Because for me, if I'm dancing to a song that has to do with, um, say, like, there's this song called uh, Girl Like Me. Her name's uh, by Julianne Sovillian or something, and then by her, it's featuring her. Like, that one has to talk, it talks about um, uh, her being an individual who doesn't get loved a certain way. So for me, if I was to pick that song, I would find what situation or find a past situation if I'm happy now I would try to put myself in a situation that I wasn't before oh, connect okay. to it use a situation if I was hurt how would I put myself how was I feeling then how now what is she saying how can I use what I felt before and use moves that explain words that I feel if that makes sense yeah yeah it does um, so if, if she talks about she says like hopeful girl like me so I would just think of, do something that has to do with feeling hopeful. Like for me, like I talk, like when I explain um, my style, very expressionate, passionate, um, uh, what's that word? Just uh, vulnerable, very expressive with my feelings, with Got my you. moves. So yeah, literally when I create, I tell a story through everything, if that makes sense. So no, I think, I think that's very, very, very important to understand because in any creative art, you're technically telling a story like mm-hmm. that's what makes it yeah, whether it's music whether it's photography whether it's this as a mm-hmm. podcast whether it's anything like you're mm-hmm. telling a story at the end I've of the day gone to, even before before i came a choreographer i realized what it felt like to fully give your fullest and be your like most vulnerable during a class and it's literally the best feeling and literally like i realized it it's more important 
to connect to something and dance to something that you feel you're most vulnerable with because if you don't, then you're not gonna give your fullest to it. It's just gonna end up like, I'm sorry to say it, but it's just gonna end up like another TikTok. <laughs> like, just being straight up, like, you know, like. What do you mean by that though? Like, uh, just it being moves, cause you're gonna see people that, and you'll see people that kill TikToks, but they kill it in a sense because they give their own feeling. They give that extra umph rather than just. And you could tell, right? Like, if I'm gonna hit this, like, I'm gonna, like, okay. feel it. You feel me? Like, mm -hmm. I'm gonna give something that has to do more than just a move. Like, it has to do more. Not just going through the motions. Yeah, definitely. So when I create, it has to do all based off of how I feel, what I'm going through, what I've been through. Okay, so the, that's funny because the way you just explained that is very similar to example, like, for how, how artists make music, right? Mm -hmm. Like, they have to immerse themselves in that mood. Like Drake, for example, everybody, everybody knows Drake. Like Drake, when he made that album, I think it was Views or which, whichever yeah. album that he last made, he talked about how he needed to go back to Toronto. He needed to mm -hmm. go into the snow because he needed that feeling needed to make. Atmosphere. He needed the atmosphere to make that album, to make the music. Mm -hmm. You can't make, you can't make art towards something that's that you're not feeling at that time. Yeah, and I think uh, relating uh, back to dance and and regarding that, I think for us, uh, that's freestyling. Mm -hmm. understanding feeling the song like for me when I'm about to choreograph to it I understand why I'm choreographed to it if I feel it and I understand I have a story to connect with it so that's the first check the second thing is I freestyle to it I have to fully understand what she's saying let my body move let so it, you're just you're just moving just moving like, let it let it flow however whatever I'm feeling just like if I mess up or do something weird like let it be like I'm still letting my body do the uncomfortable thing so I feel comfortable with it if that makes sense because if I were just to try to choreograph to it start to finish like it's gonna be hard like i'm gonna like have to think of okay like how do i what what should i do for this word like no like if if i freestyle to it from the top to the bottom i understand oh when i freestyled i felt like this or i gave this type of vibe on this part so i could relate back and like retract like okay i, I know where i'm at for this part like I, I see myself doing this on this part like i already i'm placing out while i'm freestyling what parts i'm gonna hit Oh, interesting. So, and, and then when I choreograph, I don't start. You know, people when they sing or write, sometimes they'll start. They'll write from the beginning to end. Obviously, yeah. for me, I don't do that. Is when I choreograph, I, I'll either start it if I'm feeling a part where I like. I'll start on that, and then if it comes to a part where like, ooh, like I see something tight happen on this part, I'll skip to that part and do all the moments first. So I hit oh. all the moments that are gonna be like the bang of the dance. All the like the parts where people are like, damn, like you know. And then once I have those locked in and set, I tra I um, fill it in with the transitions, the in betweens that need to okay. be filled in. And those are like the 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 growing part of the pieces. It's like so you put the big pieces mm -hmm, there first, yeah, and then make you worry the about moments first, and then worry about the fillings that don't really matter most. If is, that makes is, sense. Is that like standard? Is that what mo most choreographers uh, do? Honestly, I don't even know. I, I Everyone has a different process. The way people choreograph is very different from the way I do. Like everybody has their own process. Like, but I've um, had people where they kind of choreograph like the way I do. They, they do moments and parts, you know, like it's almost like you have a favorite party, like you have a favorite song and there's certain parts of the song that you like the yeah, most, yeah. Like the certain parts you like to sing the most or rap, like a like chorus. That. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, like, you write the chorus and mm -hmm. you and then you write the verses around it or mm -hmm. something. For example, exactly. okay. Mm -hmm. So what do you do to tie it all together and remember it? Is it just in your head or Retention, do you write it down? Muscle memory. Or? It's just doing it over and over. So if I start, if I start off with the move, if I'm saying like hit, 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 I'm gonna do it again repetitively until I remember it. And then once I remember it, I move on to the next part. And then just doing it consistently, it's, it's retention. It's, it's almost like uh, your math tables. Math tables. Okay, yeah. yeah it's, it's almost like math tables. Like you do, like you get, it's almost like that point where like you know this number times this number equals that number without even have to do the math in your head because you just do it so many times. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. I hear you. Yeah, so, so, so when... It's crazy because it's, it seems like it's like a whole different type, part of your brain that you're working out. You know no, what I mean? No, you definitely are. And muscle memory, that's why, like, you could be the smartest person in the world when it comes to dancing. Like, it's hard. Like, memorizing moves. Mem like, you're doing, you're multitasking. Yeah. In a sense. Like, literally. It's pretty crazy. When you, when you finish tying it all together, what makes you decide whether or not that you want to use it, if that makes sense? Um, honestly... I think I never even get to that point because I, I don't choreograph to anything if I don't feel it. Ah, oh, I like that. I like that yeah, answer. Yeah, so any, 
I'm not gonna put my hands on anything that I'm not fully gonna invest myself in if I know I'm not feeling it fully. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and you you mentioned this earlier. You're at a point now where you're confident in yourself mm-hmm. to where you can make decisions uh-huh. like and that's, that. And that's the thing too. What's hard too is sometimes there are things that I don't want to put my hands on. Also because I might be you know like nervous or like ooh like I don't know like I don't know if I could do that. It's just like so that's more of a still confident type of thing. And everyone has you know they're unconfident about a lot of stuff. And I'm fully not confident with everything that I do but there are some parts of me that is you know inconfident and that's normal it's a human thing and Mm -hmm. that's also has to do with me being young and you know just it's hard not to compare yourself to others that you want to be like you know and it happens and I even tell my students this not to compare yourself but I even still find myself but you know it's it's a growing process but what do you what do you draw your inspiration from um honestly I think Kobe one of them Kobe Kobe, one of them. He was actually, that's, growing up, my favorite number was number eight. Okay. I think just his drive and just his passion is just, anything he does is just to his fullest. Like, I remember, like, I feel like for him, his mindset is just like, if I'm going to do anything, I'm going to do it all the way. Like, I'm not going to half-ass anything. Like, yeah, I could definitely tell that's a quality you have, for yeah, sure. definitely that. But I also feel like, I think it has to do with the way I was raised, in a sense, because I don't, I feel like there's not really people or I can't pinpoint certain people that I use for inspiration. I think it's more so a, a thing that I was grown up with. Yeah, this, it's, it's, it's in you. It's yeah, like it's, a drive that yeah, you have. It was taught. It was, it's just like an instinct now. It's installed in me. Yeah, pretty yeah, much yeah. by my parents. And, you know, like, I, I try not to be, or like people are like, oh, like, you're modest, blah, blah, stop being modest. But, like, I try not to be, like, you know, like, I used to have a hard time with accepting, like, um, compliments. I you was did. so bad in the beginning, but like I have to realize now, like I have such a fan base where like I can't just leave these people out. Like I may feel like you know this piece wasn't as tight or I didn't do as good, but like these people still think it's tight, so I have to give back. You know. Why do you think you were that way as far as just having a di- difficult time accepting compliments? Uh, I think it. I think it was because I was still comp- at that time. I was still trying to. I was wishing I was being acknowledged and reassured that. I'm doing good by certain people. So if you didn't get that acknowledgement from those people, mm, I felt, the other people didn't matter. Yeah. I felt okay. like I wasn't doing good enough still, you know? Yeah. But I feel like that came with them not thinking that I'm good enough. It just had to do with, you know, they don't want to see me win. And uh. these are people too that have to do with, you know, that might be like hater like. It's in general, just everybody. But um, I think more most of that part had to be with people that, didn't want to see me win. Like, I, there would be certain people, like, I would look for, like, um, like, dang, I wish this person, like, commented, or, like, dang, like, I comment on this person's, like, stuff, like, yeah, they don't comment on mine, you know, like, uh-huh. dang, is my stuff, like, really not bad, or, like, you get in your head, yeah, so, like, you start, you start head, creating yeah. these fake mm-hmm. scenarios that may not even be the case, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. and it's crazy, too, because literally, like, when you create these scenarios, like, they stick in you, and they took a toll on you, especially being a creative, because, like, that one thought could lead you from creating and being unmotivated to do anything for like a whole week Mm -hmm. and you're just stuck and then you're just like i don't know what to do yeah and it's hard to 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 get yourself out of that mindset like it is even if you realize that it's an issue it's gonna be it's one of those things where it's like it's it's kind of always gonna be an issue if you're creative it's Mm -hmm. always gonna be there but it's like you get better at it by working through it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. By realizing that, like, all right, I'm getting in this mindset. I'm conscious of it. Let me, let me take actionable steps to get out of it rather than no, letting it destroy you. Especially when you're having a bad day. Like, it's hard being a creative and having to go to work and make people happy and you being at your worst. You know, like, it's so hard. But at the end of the day, like, you have to realize, like, these people that you're teaching, like, you're making their day. So whatever you had to deal with or whatever you dealt with, like, they're going to make it better. And it's only going to get better from there. And this is only one day. Tomorrow's another. And it goes after that. So literally, it's just like, don't contemplate and sit in your thoughts and just be hurt over the same thing that you're going to be hurt over the next day, just thinking about it. It's like, just forget about it. Move on. And you'll grow. Yes, sir. And remain positive, too. Yeah. And that's one thing, like, going through stuff and having things on my mind and like being upset and then going to dance like I want to be upset like oh I don't want to teach right now and then like I get there and like they just bring the life out of me I'm like wow like like this is why I do what I do you know like, it's got to be amazing man to lo- do what you love yeah like you make a living out of it it's crazy it's, def- it's hard definitely hard not I would <laughs> say being creative and like you know working 
as an individual, making your own money on your own is, is hard. Like, I wouldn't say I have myself at a point where I'm just settled, like, I have everything perfectly fine. Like, no, like, I still, like, I need to get... I need to get a side job still. Like, I need to get my license. Like, I ain't got my license yet. Like, you know, like, we all may seem perfect, but there's a lot of things that we all need to work on and responsibilities-wise, you know? And I'm still learning. You know, we all didn't grow up the same, so... Yeah. I'm still pushing myself to be better, not for myself, but for everybody that I touch, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and the fact that you you do impact the youth and their lives, that's got to be a big factor too. The fact that like, you're not just doing it for you anymore. You're doing it because it's like you said, touching other lives. Yeah. And that's crazy too. Cause when it came to sports, like I feel like I always was that type to like give like people advice or like talk to people whenever they need someone to talk to. I felt like I had the words that people were looking for, you know? Mm -hmm. So when I came to teaching and dance and I was like, wow, like I'm actually like a really like, I'm very social with people. Like Almost, almost like a therapist type. Like, yeah. Like I know how to talk to people very, very well and understand where they're coming from, like how to relate to them in certain situations, and like you know, just getting them to know there's always a, a better side of, of the building. Yeah. You know. And you get to you get to express that quote unquote muscle through through like dance, you know, yeah. which is dope. Mm -hmm. And I get to express myself like stuff I go through. I get to be vulnerable and express that through dance. Like I could explain like I could have a dance core. Uh, choreographed piece and this piece may be sentimental to me because it had to do with something that had to do with my past or something I went through when I was at a deepest time so that might help this person going through a deepest time let out whatever they're feeling and they're better yeah you know exactly so it's, it's a blessing being able to see people be better and just be happier off of my movement yeah it's got to be a good feeling man mm -hmm. I can imagine what so what's next for you man like what what goals do you have coming in the near future uh, do you have anything planned honestly right now we're to we're we're kind of stuck just because of COVID, you know, but I'm kind of doing my best to try to teach as many Zoom classes as I can outside of dance. I teach normally like two times a week uh, at the lab. Um, but besides that, you know, I'm just I'm trying to get myself now to start to create more projects. So in the future, starting now, like I'm going to be creating and you're going to see a lot more of uh, just different content than you would normally see from me. More not class based, more um, concept video based like creating Creative. my own stuff to a certain song that'll be my work you know? yeah. rather than it being um, for the lab or for all these other things which is obviously great but as an individual if I want to put my work out there and get hired in the future like I need to start doing these things so I'm starting to try to take accountability and pu um, push myself to do so but besides that uh, just waiting for you know whole, all this whole COVID thing to, to shut down so I could you know on tour and everything yeah. but it is also hard because people are getting booked right now during this time for music videos and stuff so i think right now i need to get a manager <laughs> so i could um uh, get back to being a back like going auditions to be a backup dancer yeah because without a manager you can't get hit up for auditions so very true I need that and then besides that i actually want to get back into acting oh really yeah i used, get to, the acting act, I used to act when i was like younger and i used to get into it and I had a couple auditions and i did really well i got a few actual callbacks from a bunch of places wow and you know uh some of it had to do with me being young and then obviously someone else getting the part but i actually went pretty far with like some auditions and stuff so i want to get back into it like i feel like i do well like camera like talking i yeah. loved theater when i was younger i went to a wow i didn't know any of this i went to a performing arts school um what in la puente uh from Fire. first grade to seventh grade wow yeah and i was in theater my entire literally like entire years i was there in, in choir as well i can see that man like if you take the same drive that you that got you to where you're at and dance mm -hmm. and use that towards towards acting there's not yeah, a doubt that, in my mind that you and that's be successful. why i feel like it wasn't a surprise to me that like i'm dancing that's my career now because like i look back and i'm like i've always had some sort of performance oh uh, yeah base in my life mm -hmm. like if it's acting theater singing dancing like playing the saxophone i was in jazz band like i played the tenor saxophone too like i got loved, all these hidden talents bro yeah, you're like, just dropping yeah. on us right now we didn't even know yeah, all this <laughs> he went past all that in the journey <laughs> no, that's crazy ass, like, i love like i just love putting my hands on a lot of stuff just being able to do everything and just like it feels good because like you know someone like dang imagine like we have a saxophone here i wish i'm gonna play like oh i can't just, hey we want to hear like, bust it out me, like i just want to be able to do everything but besides acting too uh I want to be able to start getting, I want to start like being able to get into singing because I do sing a little bit, but uh, I used to have like pipes before when I was younger, but obviously people hit it in and, yeah. you know, it took away those high notes that I can't hit now, but, <laughs> but eventually I want to be able to get there, especially like um, 
uh, my boyfriend, like he sings now. Yeah. So I want to be able to start making music with him. Shoot. Like, yeah, yeah. Be tight. Very talented. What is what's his name by the way? So we uh, shout him out. Marquis. Marquis. Yes, he lives in Palm Springs. Uh, God, we've been together for about like nine months now. Yeah, it's been a minute, but yeah. Hey, man, man got vocals. I'm telling you right now. Yeah. He played he played me one of his tracks and keep on keep on the lookout for him, man. Yeah, he's crazy. He's definitely be, he's coming out with the EP soon. He's definitely it's in the works right now. But trust me, it's. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a hit. It's very different. So fire, know. man. We're look, we're looking forward to that. We're looking forward to continuing to watch your journey, bro. Like I said, very proud yes. of where you're at right now, and very excited to see what's next for you because you have the drive, you have the talent, and you're doing it. And I'm gonna continue to watch your journey, bro. I'm Thank excited you, bro. for you. Where can people find you um, on socials if uh, they want to follow social you? media? Uh, Instagram is uh, and dot van a n d dot v e n n, and then uh, I really don't use anything else. Pretty much, just really just Instagram. Okay. Yeah, you can catch all my stuff there. I'm pretty consistent with stuff that I post, so like it up. Hell yeah, follow him. All right, we're going to end with that. Let's cheers to the end this. Cheers, Andy, this was, this was fun, bro. Andrew, yes. I love this, man. Thank this you. Tight. All no, right, that's a wrap from Ambiance, Levi, Drew. Drew, we out. Peace. See ya.